terms of the uh, people they're writing, what are they seeing? Nothing. Seeing they're seeing right now this. I speak. They're recording. Yes. Good evening. Uh, this is the Lindenville Central School District's Audit Committee. We need to wait just a minute or two more, and then we'll begin this meeting. Today is May 18th, 2008, uh, 2020. Thank you. We're, we're, on, we're, we're, all, we're all set. All right. Uh, good evening again. Uh, this is Lindenville Central School District Audit Committee. This is uh, Monday, May 18th, 2020. Tonight, we have just one uh, presenter, John Renquist, CPA from Mango Metal Bar. Uh, John's going to do a presentation in terms of what our audit will consist of when we do have the audit in the next few months. So John, thank you. Uh, take off, thanks. Great, thanks, thanks Joe. So let me share this. We'll see if this works. Okay, so everyone should be able to see the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so I'm walking you through our, our audit um, for the 2020 year um, and what that consists of, the services and uh, our approach and management's roles and, and different elements of the audit. Um, and just kind of jump right into it. So scope of services. So these... Uh, are the various reports that we'll be issuing based on the results of our audit, um, an opinion on the financial statements themselves, whether they presented fairly uh, in regards to government uh, auditing standards. We'll be presenting a opinion on the internal controls the district has, as well as its compliance with laws and regulations. 
Um, also, because you have federal money, and we'll discuss uh, some more on the federal money uh, later, uh, we have uh, opinions on internal control related major program, uh, which are your federal programs and the schedule of federal awards. We also do a separate audit on your extracurricular activities and we'll issue an opinion on those. Uh, management's responsibilities, and these are laid out in the engagement letter that we provided you, uh, but basically management designs is responsible for the designing internal controls for providing us with all the financial records that we request. They're uh, responsible for uh, uh, designing uh, um, responses for any findings that we have and, and, and making uh, corrections. Um, so management's responsibilities, our audit approach. So this is a little bit different this year and our approach varies every year because we take a look at what areas of risk exist in, a, in the district and designer testing to uh, basically address those risks. Uh, basically the big story this year is really going to be uh, the result of the pandemic and, and what things have changed as far as the district, uh, how it operates, um, at least uh, since March. And uh, that will impact our audit. Um, luckily, you know, our firm has invested significant resources and amounts on uh, getting uh, technology out to our staff and, and being able to, uh, you know, uh, work remotely, uh, have things scanned to us and scan things to people um, and be in, remain in contact with our staff, even though they're we're all in different places. Uh, I think we're all kind of doing that this these days uh, now anyways. Um, so uh, so our and so far this year, uh, our preliminary audits, so this is when we do most of our con testing of internal controls and uh, a meeting with staff and, and discussing those controls and, and performing those tests. Uh, so far, uh, everything we've done has been remotely. Um, as far as uh, getting reports, uh, making phone calls to, uh, to uh, district personnel and uh, interviewing them uh, either through by just a basic phone call or video chat. We definitely have those capabilities. Um, and then uh, having uh, documents that we would normally physically review, having those scanned in and sent to us. So. Uh, it's been a very different approach. Uh, we're handling it very well. The response has been very well with the districts uh, that we've worked with so far. Um, we're scheduled to come out to Lindenville at the end of June. Um, so not completely sure what our situation will be at that point, whether we'll be uh, on site or whether it'll still be re or remotely or a mixture of the two, but uh, we, we are capable of doing that, so things should work out just fine. Uh, pandemic response, so, uh, you know, like I say, things have changed significantly in the way the district operates, at least since March, and so it's going to be important for us to look at how has that impacted your processes, what has changed, who's approving things now, or how is that being done, how is it being documented, um, you know, certainly uh, the way school lunch is operating right now is significantly different than it has uh, previously. Um, so we will look at all of that as well as prior to the pandemic, uh, responding to, uh, to uh, how the district was operating prior to that. Uh, key controls, so those are the controls that are we, we identify as most important that need to be in place uh, in order for us to be able to rely on controls. So we perform what we call walkthrough. So we meet with folks and we gain an understanding of those controls. We also do testing of the controls. So we'll select transactions to make sure that what we're being told is what, what we can see uh, looking through the controls. Uh, we will probably do some different procedures related to um, the pandemic, COVID-19, 
Um, so we may be testing transactions before the pandemic and afterwards. Okay, uh, based on the results of those tests, we'll communicate any uh, findings that we have or where we note that maybe a control didn't occur when it probably when it should have. Um, and we'll work with uh, Joe and his staff. We've always done a good job of responding to our uh, items that we've noted and and uh, clarifying or making sure that what we've what we see is correct if it's a finding or it's not. And then we'll communicate the items to the board. Uh, compliance. So again, we're also looking at compliance with laws and regulations. Um, and we perform tests to make sure that the areas of compliance bidding is one of those areas that we'll do testing on. Um, areas to monitor um, down at the below here. Uh, school lunch claiming procedures. So again, there's some modification to that under uh, COVID-19. Uh, what's how that's going? Uh, new federal dollars. So um, there's more different federal dollars for child nutrition to help support the way uh, uh, meals are being served right now. So now you're serving uh, basically anyone who's under 18, and all meals are free. All right, but how are you handling that and what are your procedures to uh, um, count those meals, distribute those meals, make sure they're only uh, going to the, the, uh, the children who are eligible. Um, CARES Act, so these are, are uh, some additional federal monies. Uh, this really won't impact the district until 2021, um, but there's some things to consider there. Uh, not listed here, but kind of new on the horizon. Uh, there is some talk about perhaps some relief for uh, unemployment costs for the districts. So um, there may be some money to help uh, offset some of those costs if the district has those. Uh, also during our audit, we address fraud um, and, and the risks of fraud and basically looking for situations where uh, there are individuals uh, in place who uh, perhaps meet any of these characteristics. Uh, look, you know, uh, looking for weak internal control structures, um, folks who maybe have some pressure to commit fraud, that kind of thing. And we we do interviews with your staff and uh, ask about that directly um, to see if anything is. Uh, suspected or known out there and we'll do additional procedures as ne necessary to to address those risks um and that's that's fraud um uh, moving on uh one of the areas of focus is always going to be kind of your fund balance and your reserves and so here's a quick look at uh, some of your your reserves that you have set up, and and this is so important. Um, how districts have uh, been able to uh, establish reserves and maintain reserves and use those funds. Uh, and and this district, if you look, you you've done a very good job. You've you've set some monies aside, and you know, guess what? Right now, this is what those monies are. That's why you've been setting these monies aside for for. Uh, these future situations where uh, uh, things could go bad and, and, and uh, money uh, aid starts getting cut and you need to uh, make up the differences in places. Uh, luckily, this district's done a good job of funding reserves. So you've set some monies aside. And you can see where you've set monies. You've got um, monies in your workers' comp and unemployment uh, reserves. Uh, these are uh, kind of good reserves to have because the monies are fairly accessible uh, based on board resolution. So uh, your ability to fund these reserves and then uh, subsequently pull the money back out uh, it, to, to uh, help you uh, balance your budget or deal with a situation where perhaps uh, you have an expenditure that's um, much higher than it was budgeted. Uh, the, the reserves are very easy to pull money out of to help cover those costs rather than having to transfer funds from a different uh, um, budget line. 
more of a strategic reserve. You have uh, ERS reserve funds uh, set aside to help deal with uh, changing costs or changing rates in ERS, your retirement system contributions. Uh, you know, these the uh, contribution rates are based on the market. Um, luckily, I mean, they, there's a five-year rolling average that they use to set those rates. So probably won't see any immediate spike in the rates, but it's going to happen probably next year and then moving forward um, that those rates will be impacted um, by the, uh, the stock market, uh, the downturn in the stock market. So having these funds available to you is very good because they'll be available to help with some of those uh, increases in those rates, um, but you know, and, and we talk to uh, talk to the board, and, and and you do pay attention to this, and uh, I know uh, you do have a, a, a long term plan, uh, and and those are very important because once you start spending reserves, uh, you really need to make sure that you have a plan on how you're going to stop spending those. So if you're starting to spend from your reserves. You want that long-term look out there so you can say, you know, we're going to be spending. It's going to help uh, help us balance our budget for a certain period, but we're going to have a plan on how to stop relying so much on those reserves because once those reserves are gone, you have a big problem uh, with budgeting moving forward. Uh, and as I say, this district has done a good job of setting those funds aside, uh, having them available and, and setting uh, setting up those long-term uh, reserve plans. Um, 1920. So these are just some some uh, some appropriations, the fund balance and reserve that you did uh, do for the last two years. So for the 1920 year, just what you've been appropriating. Um, so you can probably expect to appropriate some balances for next year to help you uh, deal with your budget, and we'll look into that. And again. You know, our, our, our look is to make sure that you, you have a plan in place. And we talked about a lot of this stuff. Um, just a, a couple things to note. Um, if the district is planning to have uh, or is projecting any surpluses this year uh, for fund balance, uh, make sure that you do have those resolutions to fund reserves uh, passed. By June 30th, um, there is a uh, something out there, some talk out there of perhaps there being a waiver for um, for the four percent limit, um, which uh, nothing's happened yet, but we'll we'll let you know if if something does. And again, make sure you have a plan to reduce your reliance on reserves um, if you do start to spend. Okay, so moving forward, CARES Act, uh, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, there's really not a, um, so, so what what will happen is, is your state aid is going to be cut in part, uh, but the amount they cut will come, will be replaced by these stabilization funds. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of guidance on how, how these funds will be reported. Um, our thought is that probably they'll be similar to the era funds that you've got uh, back in two, 2009, 2010. Um, so th there will be um, probably some need to make sure that you are applying these um, dollars against specific expenditures rather than just against your whole budget. Um, so uh, looking to track those expenditures separately, um, you know, just have good accounting records. Um, there, there are 12 criteria in the CARES Act on what those funds can be spent on. So uh, we're expecting that there will be some kind of requirement to make sure that those funds are um, being able to be applied against specific expenses. Uh, school loss or deficit. So we're, we're going to be seeing this across a lot of districts uh, where you have these losses. Um, but uh, just letting you know that that's an uh, can be funding those from the general fund be, can, can be considered an ordinary contingent expense. So you are able to do that. 
Um, so you can amend your budget and transfer those funds or uh, set up a non-spendable fund. So uh, a, uh, an amount loaned to the school lunch program that you're expecting to be paid back at some point. Okay, uh, extra classroom funds. So, you know, the districts had to shut down pretty quickly without a lot of um, uh, lead time and, and what to do. Uh, so you may have some things going on in the extra class that, you know, fundraising that was going on, trips that were planned uh, that weren't able to be taken. Um, and, and so we're recommending that districts do contact the faculty advisors and your central treasurers and make sure all that stuff um, uh, it gets resolved. Uh, if there's any deposits that weren't made uh, sitting in someone's drawer, make sure those get uh, get get deposited. Uh, any unpaid bills should be paid. Um, senior class money. So uh, typically the senior class does everything they can to spend all their money uh, by the end of the year so they don't have any and maybe do a donation at the end of the year. Um, but if the class is in a, is a meeting, how, how do they spend those funds? What do they do? Um, you know, and our recommendation, I mean, uh, if you're doing Zoom or, or, or this media to be able to uh, have a big meeting, get, get the class together, see what they can do to spend monies. Um, if the class was doing a trip and parents had made any uh, specific uh, payments, uh, down payments uh, uh, for the trip, those probably should be refunded if the trip wasn't going to be taken. Um, but uh, so so there's probably some work to be done with the extra class just to make sure everything's taken care of. Uh, uniform grant guidance. So SEDs out there doing audits uh, for your federal monies. Um, and, you know, I, I know we talked about this back in the fall uh, in our last year audit, uh, these procedural manuals. So. Uh, if you're going to be subject to any of these audits, they're going to be looking for these uh, written procedural manuals on how the district addresses uh, compliance with federal uh, its federal grants and the requirements of those. Uh, also, your maintenance effort calculation and your title grant programs and your uh, special ed programs. So this is the amount of spending that the district does um, already. Uh, uh, without the federal monies, uh, this is a calculation that shows that the district isn't reducing spending just because it's getting additional federal money. Um, so uh, the, the state is looking at this. Um, they rec you know, so we're recommending making sure that there's more than one set of eyes on this calculation to make sure that it's it's accurate. Um, Smart Schools Bond Act, uh, they, the, they are out there doing some audits of these uh, smart school monies. Um, and I know the district has, has, has a project, but does a very good job of uh, tracking those expenditures and making sure that they're tied out to specific invoices and, and, your, and your plan, which is just, it's very important. That's what they're looking at um, to make sure that that's being done. Uh, cybersecurity, you know, this is extremely important, uh, especially this day and age. I know there's been an uptick in, uh, in activity with all this uh, pandemic stuff going on. Uh, I've certainly gotten a couple emails from banks I don't do business with tell, talking about my account. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an ongoing thing. And how is the district monitoring, documenting, communicating? Uh, have you put in place those policies required under Ed Law uh, 2D? Um, you know, so make sure that that's, that's going on. Uh, OPEB, uh, something we've talked about, about uh, before and with, with our districts, we talk about this. Uh, so that whole obligation is now sitting on your uh, government-wide balance sheet and it uh, certainly impacts the bottom line. Uh, your district has done a very good job of controlling those costs. Uh, you know, it's it's based on the benefits you provide to your uh, employees um, and how lucrative those are. So um, 
it's it's just important to to, to note that uh, the district has 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 done a good job with that and keeping that liability down. Um, you know, uh, and again, we talked about uh, bond agencies really aren't looking at this, uh, but how long won't can they last not looking at it when other states are able, uh, governments are able to fund this liability, we're not able to fund it in this state. So that liability just sits there causing a big uh, negative amount on your balance sheet. Um, but again, uh, how you control is, is where that's important. Uh, some good news, uh, in a sense, GASB, uh, due to the pandemic, has uh, delayed implementation of uh, some of the new standards. So um, fiduciary activities, which really just changes the way what is reported and the way it's reported in your trust and agency funds, which include your uh, extracurricular activities and those scholarship funds. Uh, GASB Statement 87 leases, so um, there, there's just going to be a change in the way leases are accounted for, so any operating leases, so those are the ones where you're just paying a uh, lease payment but not, don't actually own the uh, assets that you're leasing, uh, there's going to be a change to that and the district will end up recognizing an asset on their books for those leases. Uh, luckily, that's been delayed for another couple of years, so you have time to um, come up or identify all your leases and 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 be ready, more prepared for when that becomes due. So that's my presentation. Um, any uh, any questions that anyone has about the audit or? Or anything going on? I do have one question. Sure. And I think it's come up at a meeting before, but I know that BOCES has, I had heard BOCES was considering offering some sort of program to help um, with like spotting holes and maybe security issues mm -hmm. and, and doing, and doing a, an audit for the district. Do you know mm -hmm. if they actually ended up rolling out a program like that? Well, I know uh, a couple of BOCES have started doing those types of things with their districts. Uh, Wayne Finger Lakes, I know, has done some stuff. I believe uh, the Genesee Valley BOCES has. Um, but uh, certainly uh, the, contact your Rick if you're working with those guys uh, the, and see what services they do offer because that has become more of an important thing. You know, uh, I mentioned the Ed Law 2D which, uh, you know, requires a lot of vetting, um, you know, who has access to what record in the district and uh, requires a lot of, um, you know, approval now of your, your vendors. And, well, your vendors include BOCES and all the vendors that BOCES deals with uh, for your computer. So, uh, so yeah, BOCES has been doing uh, a lot with, with um with IT and with their districts, uh, you'd have to contact uh, your what, BOCES too? Uh, <laughs> which BOCES, Monroe or ON? BOCES. Our, our home BOCES is Niagara Orleans, but our REC is Erie 1. And right, Erie 1. so that's, <laughs> that's where it gets confusing. So um, probably deal with the folks, um, your REC, to see what, what they're doing. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any any other questions? Okay. Well, then I'd just like to thank John. John, thank you very much for coming in tonight and your time. Thank you. No and problem. If there's no further questions, then we'll bring closure to this audit committee. Um, thank you all for paying attention and listening. Whoever is on the call and the the uh, the uh, and so thank you again. All right. Thank you.